Number seven, consider the 65 kilogram ice skater being pushed by two others shown in figure 5.19. Letter A, find the direction and magnitude of the total force, which is the total force exerted on her by others, given the magnitudes F1 and F2 are 26.4 newtons and 18.6 newtons respectively. So uh, here we have our picture, right? Here's a skater in the middle. There's a force F1 being applied and a force F2 being applied, and it creates this little triangle, right? Because F1 and F2 are gonna be perpendicular to one another. So um, we use all the knowledge we have gained prior, right? In the prior chapters about vectors. So I draw a little triangle here. Uh, the resultant vector is F total, right? So the resultant vector here is going to be F, I'll just call it F sub T. We have F1, and what was its value? It said 26.4 Newtons. And F2 would be, uh, excuse me, 18.6, 18.6 Newtons. And uh, our job, right, we're tasked to find the total, the resultant, right, aka the hypotenuse. So how do we do that? Well, fairly simple, right? You can use Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or we can use this essentially reworked Pythagorean's theorem, sum of all the x values squared plus the sum of all the y values <clears throat> square. So just plug in your x value, which is F1, right? That's in the x plane. Okay, so that's 26.4 squared plus then your y value. That's the F2. Okay, and it is 18.6. And that'll be squared. And literally all we need to do now is just throw it on in the calculator. So Square root of 26.4 squared plus 18.6 squared. 32.3. So 32.3 uh, newtons, right? Because they were all in newtons. So that would be the resultant value. All right, not too bad. Straightforward stuff we've done before. So now it says, um, oh, oh, whoops. We also had to find the direction, right? It says find the direction and magnitude. So that's easy, right? The direction they're just referring to uh, this angle here, okay? So to find that, we can use tangent. So tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So in reference to that angle, right, the opposite side would be 18.6 newtons and the adjacent side is 26.4. And then first do the division. So 18.6 divided by 26.4. And then do second tan or inverse tan of 0.70 five, which would be the appropriate Lee um, rounded value there. So we get a degree value of 35, then 0.2 in degrees. So that's the theta value, 35.2 degrees. So we know the magnitude and the direction. All right, let's take a look now at letter B. So it says, what is her initial acceleration if she is initially stationary? Okay, and wearing steel-bladed skates that point in the direction of F total. Okay, so basically, right, if I had to, um, let me just label this part A, if I had to detail um, a free body diagram for her at this particular point, it would be something that looks like this. Here's my axis. I'm gonna put the vector now in red, the resultant vector. It'd be somewhere about there. Yeah, let me make it a little straighter. It would be somewhere around there and it had a value of 32.3, and this angle in here was 35.2. Okay, so now what, we, what we're what we looking to do is we're looking to find the acceleration. If this is the uh, net force, right? Uh, well, I shouldn't say net force. If this is the force applied, okay, the resultant force of those two other skaters pushing the central skater, what we need to do now is we need to find the uh, frictional force, if there is any, right? And there should be, unless the problem assumes no friction, but they're not doing that here. So we have to find the frictional force that opposes the motion, okay? So remember, in order to figure out, I'm basically looking at this, if you were to think about that, I'm basically looking at this uh, as like a uh, an observer from the sky, all right? I'm looking down on the skater right here in the middle. I'm just gonna shift my, uh, eh, I don't even really have to, I could draw another axis where I shift my perspective. So now instead of me having an aerial view, which is basically what this view is over here on the upper right-hand corner, it's like an aerial view. 
um, I could take a perspective of like one of these skaters, right? And then I can show the Y components and the normal force and all this stuff. Um, but um, I don't, we don't really need to go through that because in order to find the force of friction here, okay, the force of friction, we're looking, by the way, initial acceleration. So that always involves the force of uh, static friction, okay? So I'm just going to write the formula down and see if I can figure out how to solve it. So the force, according to the formula over here on the right-hand side, the first uh, value. So the force of static friction is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. Okay, so remember the normal force is just a perpendicular force from the, um, from the plane of motion. Um, in this case, it will directly oppose the uh, weight of the ice skater. Okay, there's no angles or inclined planes or anything like that here. So uh, the normal force here will be the same as the weight. All right, and the only thing is, what's the coefficient of static friction? This, by the way, you don't have to memorize this, but just know I just looked it up before I did the problem because I didn't have room to fit the table. Hopefully I remembered it correctly. Um, it should be 0 0.04, okay? So, <clears throat> so now we can solve, right? So the force of static friction should be less than or equal to 0 0.04 times the normal force, which is the same as the weight of the ice skater, which is the, <laughs> which is the same as mg, Right, so what's the weight, excuse me, what's the mass of the ice skater? They told us 65 kilograms up here in the top of the problem. All right, so 65.0 multiplied by uh, 9.80. Okay, so the force of static friction will now be less than or equal to 0.04 times 65 times 9.8. And we get 25.5. So 25.5 newtons. Now this is the force of static friction. So in my diagram over here, that is F sub S. So this vector over here is 20, 25.4, uh, excuse me, five. All right. Now I have everything I need to know in order to figure out the acceleration initially. Okay. Um, all I need to do now is, hold on, let me just switch the colors. I can now finally use the sum of the forces in the X direction. And you might say, well, wait, Andrew, Andrew, why are you using F of F sub X, why are you using the sum of the force in the X direction? Why not the Y? Or why not find the components of these things, right? This, this vector is in the X and Y plane and so is this. So should I find the components? We don't really need to at all. Uh, reason being is because all we're concerned about, we know the acceleration will be in the same direction, exactly the same direction as the, as the net force, which if you notice, this is 32.3 and this is 25.5. So we should have a net force of somewhere around, what's that, 6.8 or so? So don't quote me on the math there, but it should be somewhere around there. Um, or 7.8, I don't know, something like that, 6.8. So uh, what we, uh, what's important is we know that the force of static friction directly opposes the applied force here. And I don't need to worry about any plane in particular. I know that these two are 180 degrees apart. So it really doesn't even matter. So actually what I'll do here let me get rid of the F sub X. Let me just say the sum of the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. All right. So the sum of the forces here would be a positive 32.3. Why is it positive? Because I don't know, it's pointing kind of to the right. And then I'll do a negative 25.5. Y negative? Because it's pointing, you know, to the left. All right. That equals the mass of the skater, which was 65.0 and finding A now. So just simply divide out the 65.0, 65.0. So we have now the acceleration being 32.3 minus 25.5, which is 6.8, divided by 65. <clears throat> so we get an acceleration of 0 0.10, what do we get? 105. Now, I mean, if you look back, guys, over here to the coefficient of static friction, there was only one sig fig. So, I mean, really, I should have had one sig fig here, etc. But... Uh, Usually as this course progresses, they don't, they, they're not too much of a stickler for sig figs anymore. So as you can see, I'm starting to trail off too. <laughs> um, but anyway, just, just note that um, it probably should be a little more rounded than, than the answer is here. But it is what it is, all right? So you should be around here. Uh, the, the most important thing is if you, get, if, uh, if you don't know how to uh, calculate the problem at all, knowing, knowing sig figs is not going to help you calculate the problem. All right, but in any case, um, know the acceleration is about 0.1 meters per second squared here. So then, 
Uh, where do we go next? Okay, so that's that. Then it says, what is her, so let her see, it says, what is her acceleration, assuming she is already moving, right in the direction of that? All right, now for part C, it says, what is her acceleration, assuming she is already moving in the direction of F total? All right, so now to approach uh, letter C, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a, another coordinate system. All right, she still has the same uh, force being applied to her, right? So that's not changing. So we still have the same vector over here uh, at this particular angle. Uh, what is it? 35.2 and it's 32.3 newtons. Right, so the force of friction is going to directly oppose that. All right, and uh, how do we calculate this friction? Well, she's already moving, so what formula do we use now? Now we use the force of kinetic friction, right? So it's going to be the force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. So the force of uh, kinetic friction will be equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction. So if you look that up in the table, it should be 0.02. All right, times the normal force here, which was the same as it was before. It's right, still the uh, mass, the mass of the ice skater, 65.0 multiplied by 9.80. Okay, so the uh, force of kinetic friction will be equal to, we've got 65 times 9.8 times 0.02, 12.7. All right, and again, the sig figs, whatever, but I'm going to do three here. 12.7 newtons, all right? So now this is the force that's opposing it here, 12.7. So now again, I can do the same thing where I do my sum of the forces equals MA. So I have 32.3 minus 12.7 is equal to 65, right? Times A divided by 65 on both sides. So A will equal now 32.3 minus 12.7. Divide that by 65, so we get 0 0.302, 302 meters per second squared. All right, that would now be the acceleration. Notice how it changed, right? Um, which it should have, okay? Uh, because there's, there's less friction in motion than there is stationary, all right? And then it, and that solves the problem, that takes care of everything. All mm -hmm. right, guys, so hope this helped you a lot. I appreciate you tuning in. And that would be awesome if you can hit that subscribe button. That would uh, help us out tremendously. I would thank you very, very much. And I look forward to helping you uh, with the next question. Take care.